So now we are jumping back to TW. We are jumping back to Supreme. And after almost recording last week, as you can see, it was a bit of a messy show last week. Or, I don't want to say a messy show, but a show with a lot going on. As... Uh, Luis Montero and Slater White won again, which I was actually pointed out. It was actually pointed out to me, and the reason why I'm making this a point is not just because they are the first ones to join up for Battle Bowl or declare for Battle Bowl, but also Slater White and Luis Montero have never lost a tag team match together. Richie Pangrazio got his first successful title defense as U.S. champion. Conrad Cardinal and Dredd fought to a double disqualification, setting up a tag team match late this week with Wildman and Dredd against Conrad and a partner. The main event, Kronos and Angus, the freshly turned Kronos against Mickey Starr and Hagar Erickson, which led to Hagar turning and all three men attacking Mickey Starr, taking Mickey Starr out of commission. The main thing was that if Mickey Starr actually got the victory, Mickey Starr would have been the challenger for Angus McLeod at the pay-per-view. But Mickey was beaten down until Sam and Hollywood could run out and make the save. Madman McManus was featured in a killer match at the beginning of the show. Marcus McCain got another win, setting up, uh, keeping him hot before his run with Hollywood. And now we move to this week's show. And yes, Pat Barrett is Conrad Cardinal's official tag team partner. But the fact of the matter is, with Pat Barrett... With Pat Barrett... Um... You know what? I'm going to do this. And then I will do this. But with Pat Barrett, I did not honestly realize that Pat was... Uh, that Pat had an expiring contract. And that his contract would expire before this week's episode of Slamfest. So I kind of lost out on the opportunity to re-sign him because I didn't realize his contract was already up. So in the process of helping, hoping that Richard Eisen would actually step in and sign him, he didn't. So that's where Russell Watts comes in to step in and team with Conrad Cardinal against Wildman and Dread instead of Pat Barrett because Pat is actually released. So there's that. But either way, let's jump into the show and I will explain as we go. Wildman and Dread are coming together as a tag team. They're in between, in flux, as you might say, as far as what they're doing next as a tag team because um, what they're doing next as a tag team because the tag team um, because the tag team Titles are kind of sectioned off. The tag team titles are kind of sectioned off by plans that I already have in place. So there's that. But that doesn't mean that these guys can't stay in the tag team division for the foreseeable future. And now, as I mentioned earlier, when we first started, Angus, Hagar, and Kronos all jumped Mickey Starr last week and beat him down to where blood was coming out of Mickey Starr's mouth and you could tell that there were some internal injuries and some issues from all the beatdowns, the Icelandic backbreaker, the big split, uh, corner splashes from Kronos. You know, the, the list went on and on and on about what they did to Mickey Starr until Sam Strong and Hollywood came out we will hear from Sam Strong later tonight, as well as we will hear from Angus, Ares, Kronos, and Hagar, as you can call it, the reinvention of Ares Titans. Romeo Hart is back for after a couple weeks off. Romeo Hart talks about the fact that he hopes that he can 
that people can see that he's really trying to change. And Rocky Star, Rocky Streets, the the um, elder statesman, I guess you would call him, the elder statesman comes out and basically lets him know that yes, they see that, but it's going to take time for people to believe that he's changed. Joey Flame and Jake Sloan, as Jake Sloan puts in another solid performance, but comes up short yet again, but still offers a handshake to Joey after the match, and Joey laughs. Joey just walks away, blows him off, doesn't even look at him, and Jake is looking a little dejected from the rejection again, two weeks in a row being rejected by his opponent after being ex after having a handshake accepted by Malcolm Rogue after Jake's debut, so this is kind of Jake's thing to offer a handshake. Last week, he did fight Marcus McKing and offered Marcus, and he did get a handshake, but it wasn't from Marcus. It was from Marcus's loyal subject, Corey Thomas. And now we move to Angus McLeod and Aries as they explain that it wasn't just the sole purpose of ending Mickey Starr, that it was where they came together to assist in making sure that the new era of SWF stayed in place for the foreseeable future, that era being the era of Angus McLeod, where Mickey Starr was out of the title picture, where Mickey Starr was not the main event, where Mickey Starr was not the man because it's time for Ares, Angus, and everyone else to have the opportunity to be in the spotlight. Do you know how satisfying it is for Ares to know that after nearly a decade of fighting Mickey Starr, he finally found someone to take the title away from him? And though he might not be an active wrestler anymore, he still has his managerial services to thank for uh, getting Angus to the world's heavyweight championship. And his former allies, Hagar and Kronos, he has them to thank for finally doing away with Mickey Starr. The Brooklyn Punk and Teddy Flame, it was announced last week that Joey, Teddy, and Brooklyn Punk would be in action this week. And it just so happens that Teddy and Joey were not the tag team. The Brooklyn Punk and Teddy were the tag team. Joey was in a singles match. But the episode of the red carpet with everyone going against the Supreme Connection and Alex looking for his rematch, the Brooklyn Punk, I mean, uh, Ace McQueen and Blackjack not trusting the fact that Joey and Teddy would leave Alex alone. And uh, coming up to watch his back. You know, the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, Ace and Blackjack are not out here for a six-man tag team match. They are out here for the prospect. Well, actually, a six-man tag team match wouldn't be a bad idea. But they are out here for the prospect of watching Alex's back, and not trusting Teddy and Joey. Romeo Hart gets in another match. I think, I could be wrong, but I think this is only a second match since coming back from his injury. I could be wrong. And now, Sam Strong talks about last week. If you go back a couple, if you go back a couple weeks to... I believe it would be early April. I believe it would be early April. The time in question. You know, I believe the time in question would be early April. Where Sam Strong actually fought Angus McLeod. Heading into Angus's rematch with Mickey Starr. And that was one of the points that Angus and Aries put. That they beat Sam Strong. And Mickey Starr made it clear that him and Sam Strong are friends but they have separate lives and separate careers. And Mickey Star, I mean, Sam starts it off with, I know that Mickey explained it away 
last week that we have our own a couple weeks ago that we have our own careers. But the fact of the matter is, I couldn't stand idly by and watch him get beaten down within an inch where his career was in doubt. I couldn't stand back and watch him get beaten down three on one like he was, and that's why I came out to help my friend. But now, Angus McLeod, I want a shot against you for the world title. Because I want to get revenge for my friend. So I want a title shot against you. But now Hollywood reappears, and Hollywood says, No, 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 going to bypass the line. You are not going to bypass the line and step a, step on people's toes just because you're friends with Mickey Starr. That does not mean you could bypass the line and get a world title shot, my friend. Because you were not the only one that ran out there and helped Mickey. I ran out there to help Mickey too. So I am just as deserving as you are for a shot at Angus McLeod. So you want to sit here and say you're going to jump the line and earn it without getting a title shot, without getting, without earning it, just because of your friendship with Mickey? You're going to rest on your laurels and, you know, be defended by saying you were friends with Mickey and you wanted to get revenge for your friend? Well, why can't I say the same thing? Because me and Mickey are not exactly enemies. And I came out there. So if you want to use what happened last week as evidence why you deserve a title shot, then I can use it just as well. So how about this, Sam? How about this? One-on-one, -on -one, me versus you tonight. Winner faces Angus at the pay-per-view. You read my mind, Hollywood. If you want to do it, yeah, let's do it. I'll, I will gladly go one-on-one -on -one against you with the winner getting, against, getting a shot against Angus so at least one of us can get some revenge for Mickey Starr. And... A shot to take that belt away from Ares and Angus, which I think is something all of us really want. And they shake, and the two of them shake hands. So even though there was a little tension and a little bit of spark there, you could tell. But the fact is, it still ends with both men shaking hands, ready for what's going to be a tremendous main event. Kimberly Evans shows why she is one of the very best women in the division and somebody that I should maybe invest a little bit more into. Defeating Judith Hamilton in Judith's second official match, I want to say. In a solid segment for Malcolm Rogue, setting up his Shooting Star Championship match against Adrian Romero later tonight. Malcolm applauds the op Adrian Romero has done a wonderful job as champion. But the fact is, he was not going to hold that belt forever. So it's time for somebody else to take the lead of the division. And that person's name is Malcolm Rogue. So let me explain this to you as Malcolm and Adrian finally compete one-on-one. -on -one, as Malcolm Rogue... Malcolm Rogue, uh, Adrian thinks he wins. And Adrian even gets the 1 2 3 while the referee's down. Though Ben Hoyt is the one that counted the 1 2 3. Though Ben Hoyt is the one that counted the 1 2 3. Okay. And they realize, you know, when the referee comes to, it is come to the conclusion that due to actions of Ben Hoyt, the match has ended in a disqualification and Malcolm Rogue wins. But But does not win the world, uh, the shooting star title. So he does come close, 
foot falls to Adrian Romero again due to circumstances outside of his control, thanks to Adrian's manager, Ben Hoyt. And here's why we have this segment post-match. As Malcolm is extremely frustrated, looking to the ref, begging him to revert, you know, change the decision or, you know, do something. But it just leads to the continuation of Adrian and Malcolm Rogue. And now we get the most interesting start of anything else, and that is Clint Wayne interrupting the All-Star team, claiming that Sam Keith looks like one of the people, one of the only decent people out here, and that he doesn't necessarily belong with Coach or Richie Pangrazio, because the people that t- show that he already had mentors that showed him the way, and if he Clint Wayne is cut off by coach. Look, Clint, the only reason why you're still standing up is because we respect you and what you've done in this, in your career. But the fact is, you think you and Ken Cullen showed him the way. Look at where he is. Look at where he was. We see where he can be. You obviously didn't. So the fact of the matter is, you took him only part of the way, and we applaud you for that. We, we, you took him a step forward. You gave him some direction, and I'm sure he is grateful for that. But the fact of the matter is, you took him as far as you could. We're going to take him the rest of the way. Sam Keith just stands there and keeps quiet, not knowing what to say, being faced with his former mentor in Clint Wayne and his current mentor in Coach Dick Pangrazio. But now we move to the main event, and this is one thing that's going to change because we are going to have a new... We are going to have a new... um, product coming over the summertime, so that's going to help us a little bit because even though I accompanied it with an associated storyline, it was held back. You know, the current product has too much, puts too much weight on proper, you know, good gimmicks, proper storylines, yada, 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 and not enough on just doing a solid main event. But either way... But either way... Hollywood comes up short against Sam Strong thanks to Marcus McKing as Marcus McKing and Hollywood have been feuding for the last couple of weeks leading well I was going to say leading into the next pay-per-view but it kind of is but that wasn't this eh, it kind of was the sole purpose for them to be feuding but Marcus feels disrespected so he dis- so he returns the favor and disrespects Hollywood by causing him to lose to Sam Strong but now this leaves unfinished business with Sam Strong and Hollywood and a question of is it going to lead to bad tension, ill will between Sam Strong and Hollywood. Either way, Sam Strong is now the number one contender because he defeated Hollywood for that right to challenge Angus McLeod and even has the face-off to end the show as Marcus McKing and Hollywood have a face-off, but they don't actually have a feud, which I kind of, you know, messed up. I should have given them a storyline because of the amount of time I've given them segments. But the main thing here is the push for Angus McLeod and Sam Strong for their official title match at the next pay-per-view and Angus McLeod's first title defense as world champion. And another solid segment to end the show, but it isn't the end of the show because we have... Dusty Streets face off with Rocky, and I know that somebody might say, well, if you didn't put Chris Marcus and Flapjack Flanagan in the feud, then, I mean, in the in the segment, it, the segment would have gotten a shit ton better. I completely agree with that. The segment probably would have gotten better if Flapjack Flanagan and Chris Marcus weren't in it, but Chris Marcus and Flapjack joined Dusty's side, and there's a story to it. Dusty... 
You know, Rocky starts off and says, Dusty, you asked me to join you in the ring tonight, but I expected you to come alone. I didn't expect Chris and Flapjack to be here. And before Rocky could continue, Dusty interrupts him and he cuts him off and says, You interrupted Romeo Hart because you can't stick you can't stop yourself from sticking your nose on other people's business. You can't stop yourself from shifting your focus and keeping your mind on one thing. You were asked here by me. You didn't need to come out and interrupt Romeo and sh give him a little bit piece of advice because where was the advice for Chris? Where was the advice for Flapjack? Where was the advice for me? You don't do it for us, you, but you gave it to Romeo. That's why they're here. It's because you disrespected us yet again. You disrespected us yet again. And the fact is, I'm sick and tired of you disrespecting me. And I know there's, Chris is sick and tired of you disrespecting him too. That's what brought us together. We're tired of your disrespect, Dad. Rocky steps forward. Dusty, I apologize to you. But I don't apologize to a pompous, arrogant kid who couldn't get past the fact that he was standing in the ring with people he never thought would give him a time of day. And the fact of the matter is, you still don't belong here. Because you can't get out of your own way, Chris. Chris goes to slap Rocky, but Dusty grabs Chris's hand and stops him from slapping his dad. And says, Now isn't the time. Rocky just stares back at Dusty. Dusty stares at Rocky. Chris is confused. Flapjack's confused as the show finally ends. I know it was a random segment to end the show with, but it was a segment that we should have ended the show with two weeks ago or been on the show a week or two ago. I can't necessarily remember, but I forgot to put it on the show, so I gave it the last segment. You know, but the reason why Chris was stopped is because Dusty didn't want him to hit his father because he's not there yet. He's angry with his dad, but not angry to the point of physical violence. He has not laid a hand on his father. He's just held in so much over the last two years, or three years, even, since 1979. He's held in so much since 1979 over the last three years that he's finally letting it all out. And that's helping, but at the, you know, at the same time, He's still got ill will towards his father. He's still got anger towards his father, but not to the point of where he wants to beat down his father. But with that being said, this is the end of the show, and there is a bigger picture here, and you see it with some of the segments. You know, there is a bigger picture here, and you see it with some of the matches and some of the segments, and... We are placing the building blocks. I know the last show that I filmed was not really for the bigger picture, but this one definitely, definitely is for the bigger picture. And building block and planting the building blocks to not just this pay per view, but next pay per view, which is Wrestling Classic in June, and then our wrestle our version of WrestleMania in july which is supreme challenge but with that being said if you want more tw content let me know down in the comment section below any ideas suggestions or anything of the like down in the comment section below if you want to keep showing your love for tw keep going with the view count keep getting the view count above let's say 10 for this video and i will keep sharing my personal save within swf because my interest level is just as high as it's ever been with SWF and I keep finding new ways to invest and keep my interest growing with this company no matter how long 
I keep going. With that being said, though, that is it from me, and I will see you in the next one.